welcome. This is a Leo 2022 forecast. And I'm going to go into at least an hour to 75 minutes of incredible depth about your year ahead. However, if you're listening to this on YouTube, you're getting the 15 to 20 minute teaser portion of my longer product that you can purchase in the description box below. It's really affordable. You can also get my all signs bundle, which is also amazing because you can look at your sun, your moon, your rising, and you can share it with your friends and family. And that link is all below down below as well. So let's get rolling. Um, I'm recording for you guys in November, and this is about 2022. Leo, this is your year to kill it in your career and in the financial gains from your career. You are on a trajectory for success, however you define it, what you want to do, what your ambitions are, how you define being successful in the world is really being um, up level, but also evolving. Some of you Leos will step away from things that you've been doing before because you realize it's not really you. But even if you step away into something new in your career or in your purpose, it's going to be quite successful. Great financial gain, even some money luck is promised you well with a little bit of hard work and we'll be going into all the reasons why and there are some sweet spots as well in other areas including your health which we'll be going into so let's get started now i'm going to begin with the reason i'm talking about career and i before we do before i get into that career thing in my all signs forecast every year i do two things i draw a card for you this is a totem animal deck called the animal spirit by kim kranz the wild unknown and at the end of the reading i draw one of these angels and ancestors cards. These are kind of messages for the entirety of the year, like a theme message, okay? However, if you're listening to this now on YouTube, you're only gonna get this portion. And if you wanna get the whole schmazzle, you know, purchase the thing down below and you'll get this part on the second half of this reporting or the second two thirds. So reminding you that this is your like holy success career, ambition, better health, and some really maybe shifting of how you perceive success and what you think is important but either which way you're going to kill it in great financial gain from your career um success reputation advancement and just it's all about your career guys so let's see what the animals have to say here <laughs> the animal oracle deck and when i say leo a sun moon and rising sign but definitely your rising sign is the most accurate and then if you're born at night you might find your moon sign a bit more accurate if you're born in the day when the sun is above the ascendant descendant you might find it is your sun sign that's accurate um you can go to astro.com or astro-seek.com use your uh time of birth please cast in whole sign houses go figure out how maybe i should put a description box below here how to cast your your chart but the idea is just go do it and then you'll know what your rising sign is and whole sign houses because that's what we're actually doing when we do this astrology on youtube all of us astrologers are actually pretending like you know that we're using whole sign houses okay now here's the card for you i spanned the deck on my lap and we're grabbing the card the deer now i have no idea what kim kranz has to say about the deer okay because it's a, you know not like i'd use this deck every day client gave this to me years ago which is such a beautiful gift um let's see i love when my clients give me presents <laughs> like i'm really like wow thank you that was unexpected and unnecessary okay i'm looking for deer so that i'll pull it up for you it is an earth uh, card she's got them in earth air water fire so it's very earthy no kidding because you're going to one of the artha houses the 10th house is very active for you which is one of the career ambition worldly success houses which is why we're talking about that for you leo sun moon and rising sign guys i'm sorry i'm looking for deer in here i swear sometimes it's like i can't cue it because i'm really not planning this Okay, so one of the things to remember in all your ambitious career success in 2022 is that the deer is about loving, intuitive, graceful, and is called the archetype of the mother. The deer represents the feminine aspects of earth energy, the energy is available to all creatures, but regardless of gender, but is especially potent in new parents. During the first few days, they are fully present nurturing and calm. Their inner beauty radiates in a sense of grace calms the room. A deer personality affects others in this way, drawing them toward a great tenderness. The deer card may appear when a birth or a celebration of new life is at hand, or when a situation calls for absolute gentleness and compassion. Key words, uh, when you're in balance in 22, you Leo, 
those you are receptive, compassionate, and nurturing. And when you're out of balance, you're concerned and protective. And to bring yourself into balance, nature and children. Now, I'm kind of laughing at that, really, because when I think about what the sky looks like for you in 2022, um, I can see why that card might have come up. You're having a lot of a Jupiter juice um, going into the house of children uh, by square. And you're also having a lot of cool energy um, coming through the um, career axis. But you have a 10th house, uh, Taurus career house, and it's earth. It's all that earth energy of the, the nurturant energy of that deer. So anyway, that's the card you get. So in your ambitious changing it up in your career and succeeding, remember all of the deer messages for you. So let's talk about the sky and why I'm saying what I'm saying for you. Well, first of all, because you guys are Leos, the sun is your ruler. That's the ruler of the ascendant. So it's your primary planet. And therefore, even though it's not a planet, it's a luminary or whatever, a sect light, it does do things for you. And therefore, you are particularly influenced by the movement of the planet as it goes through the various signs during the year and becomes, you know, Sag season, for instance, etc. where I'm recording this. But this also means that you are very attentive and influenced by the eclipse cycles because eclipses are created by sun and moon energy. So therefore, cancer rising Cancer, sun, and moon, and who are influenced by the moon, and Leo, sun, and moon, and risings are very often quite propelled forward or backwards or moved around uh, very intensely by eclipses. So let's talk about what this one is doing for you now in 22 into 23. So you've been through a journey, guys, and I'm and like, it's not... Like we've all been through a journey of eclipses going through Gemini and going through Sagittarius since 2020, summer, June, when the nodes ingress into that part of the chart, completing on December of 2021 with the last gasp eclipse in the sign of Gemini. So that cycle has been closing down. That's been giving you a lot of changes and momentum and, and all of that in your 11th house and in your fifth house, fifth house of children, childbearing, Recept, uh, for, uh, for, um, fertility, romance, creativity, the muse, even though that fifth house had a south node there. So some of that was even a bit of a, a challenging place in your life, like almost like a, a place of having to surrender and let go. And then in your uh, 11th house, you've been having the energy and, you know, I, I know a Leo, my sister's a Leo, and she, you know, had some situation where she had to bring her adult son back into her home uh, during a south node transit through the fifth house during the cycle. So, you know, things to do with your children are kind of bittersweet or your love life or your creativity or your muse because it's south node that's finishing. But you've also had the north node going through your 11th, giving you a refresher on your hopes, dreams, and wishes, giving you new ambitions and directions that you want to see your life go, like your five-year plan, giving you some greater gains from your career, and even giving you a feeling that the universe has your back and it's a friendly place. It's a bit of a luck house, you know, and people want to help you. Allies and friends can be very beneficial to you. Now that cycle's coming to a close. And what's coming into action now is the new eclipse cycle through Taurus and and um, Scorpio and Taurus is your 10th house. That's your career, your ambition, your reputation, your success. This is a North node, which expands what it touches and, and, and asks you to move, sort of move in that direction, but also just inflates all the 10th house things. I mean, in essence, you're gonna be very ambitious. At the very least, I'll say, you're ambitiously going for it in some area of reputation, status, success, and career. Simple. However, with the south node in your fourth house, it's going to pull you away from your home time. So your domestic private home life is going to take less precedence and less of your attention than your high powered career directional action. You may also find that there's some losses with the south node in 2022 going through your fourth house of home. And when I say losses, I mean, maybe a child leaves the nest, maybe um, someone, a roommate uh, moves away and you really enjoyed that roommate. Maybe you sell a home south node through your fourth house. A lot of people may release or surrender their home, whether they sell it or they move because they're going to move to a new one. They're shifting energies down there. Now, the interesting thing about having all this excitement in your career house, in your 10th house of ambition and career and reputation is the Uranus has been there, the god of change and awakening and electrifying disruptions and, and innovation and the internet. Uranus has been up there since in earnest 2019, although we tiptoed into your 10th house between 2018 May and October of 2018. So you got a foretaste of what is a journey 
of the great change maker up in your 10th house until 2026. You're going to be innovating, you're going to be changing things up, you're going to be trying new things, you're going to be experimental, you're going to be inventive in your career, you're going to maybe use the internet because hey Uranus represents the internet and all the uh, cutting edge technology slash communication stuff. Now I do really think that this year in particular you're going to be quite excited, especially around July the 27th, add a week or two on either side, when Uranus and the North Node collide in your 10th house of career, and oh my God, something exciting is happening, electrifying, okay? So we would say North Node will expand what Uranus is up to. So North Node will inflate some kind of dramatic change and excitement and exhilaration and shift in, maybe unexpected, but I wouldn't doubt that it's exciting in your career house. Now, don't forget, you are beings that are solar and and therefore, these eclipses, sometimes that we're going to talk about, don't feel so bad to you. You're kind of used to the idea of, you know, eclipses are the waves that you naturally ride. So I'm also going to bring up another thing about the year ahead. That exciting North Node Uranus is definitely a, a linchpin for your 22. You, you can put your calendar maybe mid-June to, sorry, mid-July to mid-August when this is really intensely activating changes in your chart regarding career. Because that's office of the house of the home, this can also be dramatic and sudden and exciting changes of home as well. Now, <clears throat> not for everybody, by the way, because it depends on where your ICMC axis is, but for the most of you anyway, you'll feel these themes of a change in home slash radical excitement in career, very, very powerful in 2022, mid midway through there uh, in July, pickups August. Now, you also have these eclipses going through the chart. I'm not going to do every eclipse for 2022. Um, if you want that, check my eclipse reading for 2022-23. I'll put it in the description box below. Um, that is going to be very germane to you, Leos in particular. But in the meantime, what I would say is that one of the most exciting eclipses that you're going to have in 2022 is April 30th. And that April 30th uh, solar eclipse, which sits at the... Um, 10th degree of Taurus is going to happen in an, in an enchanted sky. By an enchanted sky, I mean there's something else going on sextiling this eclipse that's quite um, particularly rare and special. So let's talk about what a solar eclipse in your 10th house might bring you. In April of 2022 through to six months after, it could bring you a, a, a very significant change in your career and your purpose and what you do in the world, as well as your reputation. So what I mean by reputation, I mean like I'm engaged, now I'm married. I'm married, now I'm divorced. I'm single, now I'm not single. I'm, you know, that kind of thing, like status changes, you know, like that. So 10th house can do that as well. So some of you may be like, you know, dating someone and hoping that you're gonna get engaged and boom, for some of you, Leo, something like that could happen or married or whatever. Now, the eclipse is happening in a sort of rough sextile to a, a pileup in your money house, your eighth house. Um, your Piscean eighth house will be inhabited during the entire month of April, more or less, by Venus in her exaltation, Jupiter in his dignity, which is rare, like every year for Venus, every 12 years for Jupiter, and then Neptune. Neptune in your eighth house of financial gain from investments and uh, spouse and inheritance and uh, grants and oh, there's so many ways money can come to you. It's basically other people's money that you get loans. Okay, you could leverage but other people's money or get involved in business partnerships with other people in order to generate money, spousal assets, um, jointly sh shared resources. And that Neptune has been there since 2012, but it is this weird triple conjunction that I'm calling the rainbows and unicorn conjunction that's ha with pots of gold and leprechauns that's happening here that happens about once every 150 years. It was like 1850 something that this happened last. And as that beautiful golden light of yumminess is piling up in your eighth house of money, it's in a sextile to your house of career. And it's timed out on the very day of that eclipse on April 30th. I say that this is going to be an enchanting new beginning of something to do with greater flow and ease in your finances. And also maybe your husband's or spouse's partners or partner's money as well, because the eighth house may not just be all about your money. Now, you know, Jupiter going through the eighth house could mean stands to inherit. You know what I mean? Like he will, he goes there every 12 years and he's going through your eighth house quite a bit in 2022 for the first four and a half months and the last two months. So keep in mind, I, I'm not 
you know, telling you that someone you love is going to die, but you know, you may be due for some money like an inheritance or something like a chunk of money coming to you in 2022. So Leo's that's good for your finances, but you're, it's all happening in tandem with some exciting changes in your career as well. And it, or your status, you know, married, divorced, worse, married, whatever these separated together, these status changes in life can be very good for you. I mean, Uranus is going to be squaring your descendant, which is your marriage partner or business partner throughout 2022. Now, depending on where your ascendant and descendant axis is, you'll feel it more strongly. And, you know, other people, other Leo, sun, moon and risings may not feel it as strongly. So it behooves you to get your natal chart out and take a look at it. If you have any planets, therefore, sitting um, in the degrees of about seven to 13 degrees of the sign of Tor of, of Leo, that means that this eclipse is exactly square your rising sign, your ascendant really engaged with it and also your descendant. Those, those degrees are really hot. So that can definitely cause some disruption because Uranus is up there too, right? It can cause some significant disruption in your relationships, your marriage partnership, your business partnership, and also in your sense of self and identity. But again, it's all moving you toward greater purpose and career ambition and success. And the reason I talk about success, it's one thing to have career ambition and really be killing it in your career and wanting to really succeed, but you're having a very long, long duration transit of Mars in your chart from August through to March, August of 22 to March of 2023 in your 11th house of great gains from your career. The 11th house is second from the 10th and it brings in the money or the money, honey, and all the gains and promotions and rewards from your hard work in the 10th. And with Mars there, he's going to be giving you ambition, drive, momentum, executive decision making power. And he's not so bad in, in Gemini, he's not in detriment. It's just like, let's make some really hard ass decisions here. Let's be very inventive. Let's make some concrete um passionate action steps towards thinking outside our box and into something new. You know, the way he can bring money in the 11th too can be through friends and allies and benefactors who want to support what you're doing and offer their time services or just money. So, you know, Mars can bring that kind of momentum to the 11th house. And also Mars is a God that cuts things away, you know, snips off the gangrene limb or chops off the dead wood on the tree so that it flourishes. And, you know, he is going to spend like, you know, six months um, August onward in your 11th house, your friends, allies, and groups of belonging. So some of you may quit the, you know, society of something or others that you belong to, or step away from some friendships that you've had, or some uh, acquaintanceships or social circles that just don't fit you anymore. And anything that Mars cuts away during that time will serve you to increase your, your depth of connection to your essence of what you dream, hope for, and wish in the world. I have this, this saying that my ex-husband taught me, my first ex-husband, a uh, master, how do you carve a perfect elephant every time? Ask the student to the master carver. And the master carver says, I carve away all that is not elephant. I like to think of Mars as that guy. And he's carving away in your 11th house all that isn't new in terms of the people you associate with, the dreams and hopes and wishes that you have that may no longer be needed because they're just weighing you down. So it's exciting and it's rare. I mean, Mars won't do this kind of six month journey through um, Gemini more than once every 24 years. So how exciting for you that this is like kind of a perfect storm of financial gain and career uh, momentum all timing out for 2022. Now I'm gonna say one last thing and then I'm gonna go on and ask you to, if you wanna hear the whole year ahead talking about every detail, um, including what Jupiter and Saturn and all the outer planets and Venus are up to, then please go ahead and get the link below. But before I jump out of there, I did mention earlier a little teaser about better health for you guys. Um, you know, Leos, you don't do well when you're not healthy, right? Because your solar energy, your vitality, your radiance, you're trying, you're basically solar light. You're, you're here to experience a vital and radiantness to your being, especially Leo rising. Other than having big, great hair, you Leo risings need to feel vital. And your house of health protocols and sickness is ruled by Capricorn. Now, technically, by the way, that's, you could have issues with your knees or your shins or your bony structures with that, you know, tends to be an area of health challenge, maybe or chronic illness. But what is happening is really that Pluto is getting ready to leave his like forever journey through your house of health stuff since 2008. And it's, you know, 
it's probably been he's been transforming the way you eat or what you do or the protocols or the exercise that you do in order to be well and healthy. So my sister is a Leo son and my God, the girl's gone through so many different diet styles or food styles, you know, like vegan, vegetarian, you know, keto, um, not for anything other than to improve her health. So I recognize this pattern going on for a lot of my Leo clients as well. And Pluto is looking for the ultimate transmutation, transformative health pro protocol for you in your daily routine routines and what you eat and what kind of movement you make that six house stuff um and so you've got a couple more years of that but this year is a very important year why well, I, I want you to go back maybe to 2013 december into the first few months maybe three months of 2014 and that was the last time you had venus in your house of health and sickness stuff so be, well no for a long time I maybe mean, she goes there once a year but this journey of like four months in capricorn she he started there in November of 5th of 2021 and finishes up in March the 6th of 2022. That is a rare event back to December 13, first two or three months of 2014. It's the last time she pitched down on improving your health, right? She's a benefic. She's a good guy, good girl. She tries to bring goodness to wherever she goes. To have her going through this part of the chart in terms of health can be really auspicious. Now, what she can bring there are joy, joyful, pleasurable, sustainable, lasting uh, ways to be better uh, aligned with your physical wellness. And um, that's because of that Capricorn overlay. She's not looking for a quick fix. She's looking for something that's enduring and that will go the distance in terms of a protocol, a routine, a food style, an exercise plan, or something like that. Secondly, um, she's also going to be probably improving your work routines as well, because work and daily habits and workplace stuff is very much that six house as well. So you come into 2022 with a bit of a bonus points on the game board with Venus supporting your health journey in that Capricorn part of the chart, your sixth house during that whole time. Certainly if you have any self-defeating habits or patterns, because uh, she's angling into the opposition to the 12th, like addictions or self-defeating, um, you know, food styles or something like gallons of ice cream every night before bed, um, she's going to help you refine that and turn it down a notch. So you're coming into 22 with almost a priority on your health, but not like you're fixating. Huh, Venus is more like, Let's just smooth this out. She started that in November and December, so you're well on your way. But it's a rare transit and does support your career as well. Things that you're going on in January and February, she is going to try in the career house. Up, uh, up there where, where Uranus is, right, um, can be very auspicious, very good for your career, sudden positive bonuses, um, women who want to support you in your career, etc. A uh, Last but not least, before we finish up the teaser, is that she does retrograde from December 19th, 21 to January 29th, 22. So when she's retrograding in that first month of January, you may find yourself going back to something that you've done before. Like, oh my God, when I was like, when I was a raw vegan pescatarian, da da da, I never felt so bad or good. Or when I used to do Tai Chi every day, I realized I was so vital and radiant. You might go back to something that you've dropped. You know, oh, I used to love that hot yoga. Why did I stop? Something that you used to do, she could go back and she could bring you the thing that you loved to do, Venus, before that improves your health. And so maybe in January, some of you pick up an old habit, old health, good health habit, and bring it back to life. And she goes direct on January 29th, and then she kicks it off, right? Then, then you're really into this new groove for sure. And uh, so that's the teaser. There's going to be a little bit more detail about that Venus story, especially as it applies to your career once we get to the paid portion of this reading. But I hope you enjoyed the teaser in that uh, window of our time together on YouTube. I would love to see you on the other side uh, by purchasing this from me today or whenever you want. And, um, and I suggest you get the all sides bundle because once you do one whole year, you're going to wish you had your moon and sun sign as well. And it, I made it so darn affordable to get all 12 signs. That's more than that's 12 videos times 60 to 75 minutes each. That's a lot of content for a very little bit of money. I know clients from my 21 year, 21, 2021, who all got back to me and raved about how useful the content was and how by listening to it uh, over and over again in different time points of their year, it really was useful. Okay, so thanks for listening, Leos. And uh, that's the end of your freebie portion. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also check my description box below for everything I'm up to, courses I'm teaching, 
join my newsletter, get a free um, reading draw every month, get a discount code for 30% off for any reading with me one time use, get a free course of mine called the Annual Perfections Course. I got a bunch of goodies when you sign up. So I'd love to see it in my weekly forecast newsletter, Cosmic Moonshine, a swig of weekly